Cool. So I'm here to talk about uh, a smooth design handle process using Storybook. I guess I can just skip the part where I talk about myself because you all know who am I, hopefully. If not, I'm just a front-end developer at Frontman. And so whenever you start a development process in any product, in any company, you start thinking about the designer developer relationship. Usually it goes like this. The designer does the research analysis, does the implementation. Once the whole thing is done, then hands it off to the developer. And at the end, you have something like this. You basically fight <laughs> with each other uh, about the implementations. That's not really cool. It's something I've experienced in uh, lots of clients that I've been at. And currently at Eneco, I try to fix that situation with two tools and I'm here to talk about them. First one is Storybook and second is Chromatic. They're both related, by the way. So starting with Storybook. Um, Storybook, for the ones who don't know about it, is essentially a way to develop UI in isolation. And starting with a use case to make sure that you guys get it right, uh, using a food delivery app as an example, sometimes you need to develop a few features that you require maybe logging into the app, going to certain pages, navigating away, and then you need to maybe you know, select things to add data to the store, interact here and there, sometimes even connect to the VPN and you rely on certain backend services and whatever to only then finally get to the component that you need to develop. That sometimes is bothersome and also not so interesting, especially when, I don't know, you go for lunch and then you, you close the computer you come back, you need to redo a few things here and there. That's not so nice. So with the storybook, Essentially, you have a way to, given that you have your components, which are used in production, and you essentially create a file called stories.jsx for whatever component you have. And then you define different variations of that component, which, which is essentially just using the template and passes certain props. And this way, Storybook will essentially list those components in their variations, kind of like a book. And every page you have access to those variations. And that's pretty cool because you can easily access those kind of scenarios, which are not so easy to, to figure out uh, when actually using the app. So as an example, the, the first scenario is using the variations of your stories. So you can play around with the component, you can change the, the mocks, you can play around with the code itself, and you can see how those changes reflect in every single scenario of that component that you have. And this is pretty useful for the uh, developers so that you can easily access all of the variations, even if, if they're pretty difficult to find, you just put them on Storybook and then you have those quick, quick access. But if you publish your Storybook, designers will also have a really quick access to essentially what could be the business rules and scenarios of every component. Storybook also has a feature called eject story. As an example here, I am working on a restaurant card, which is used in a section that contains a, a carousel. And whatever changes I make on the code with hot module reloading, I get the changes. But I can also copy the link address uh, using the eject uh, button on Storybook, access on my phone by exposing the IP directly. And then bam, it will just load a standalone app with only that component in isolation. But the plus is you also get the hot module reloading connected to that. So that's pretty awesome when you're developing things and you want to know how they actually behave in your phone. Uh, Storybook also has a pretty huge ecosystem of add-ons and you can basically add all of them if you want or uh, you can just use the ones that come by default. As an example, you can have a viewports add-on which provides you with way to simulate different viewports and basically check if your component behaves correctly uh, based on the, those viewports you are free to fully customize and put the options that only matter to you. And this is also very interesting for designers because they're always checking if things look correctly in different breakpoints, right? There's also the controls add-on, which essentially reads all of the properties of your component automatically and provides you with these UI of which you can play around. And as you can see, the component reacts uh, on runtime based on those changes. For designers, this is very interesting to check different scenarios and corner cases for developers. It's also a nice way to, you know, not have to add data all the time and you can still play around with it. And talking about designers, 
And of course, there are integrations with design tools and Storybook. And there's one add-on called Add-on Designs, which helps you connect a bunch of things. And in this case, I'm using Figma with a beta implementation that is actually something I was working on, which is adding uh, a way to get CSS values directly on the Figma embed. And it's still on beta, but uh, it can give you pretty nice insights. Storybook also allows you to like switch themes and maybe put a component side by side and see if they look like correctly on, on the themes, right? You can get the design tokens on your Figma uh, design or Zeppelin or whatever. And then you can basically use that to develop. And you know, there's so much more, but uh, I'm not here to talk about all those things because I don't have the time. And together with Storybook, there's also a really interesting tool also developed by Storybook maintainers. It's called Chromatic. And Chromatic essentially provides you, provides you with cloud hosting for Storybooks, which improves the availability of your component uh, UI catalog. So essentially Chromatic will deploy your storybook and actually version them. So you can access the storybook from three months ago, but you can also access the most recent storybook from certain branch. And Chromatic also provides you with visual regression testing. And it will essentially take snapshots, uh, both DOM snapshots, but also screenshots of your components and use them as baseline. If there's any change that you make in your branch, you push it, Chromatic will deploy the new version of storybook there but also check with the baseline and see if there are visual changes, which could be regression, right? And they will notify both designers and developers and whoever is interested, of course. And that will also give you more confidence into what you're doing. And of course, the most important part is Chromatic uh, helps you improve your collaboration. Just to make it more clear, this is an example of the Chromatics UI. And in this scenario, I changed the badge component, a very simple one. I just changed the paddings. Although uh, Chromatic's telling me the difference on, on the padding on that component, it's also changing the restaurant card components. And that's pretty interesting because the restaurant card is also used in the restaurant section, which is also used in the categories page and also in the home page. So maybe in the beginning, I'm making changes to this very small component and I think it won't affect anything else. But Chromatic is telling me all of the places that got affected by that change. And maybe that was not intended. As an example, this is something that Chromatic picked up and I, I would never have picked up myself. Uh, I was refactoring one of the uh, currency uh, logic for Locale and it, it actually was buggy. So Chromatic noticed that instead of uh, presenting a comma, now it's presenting a dot and that was not expected. So it was a bug which Chromatic told me. And Knowing all of those things, if we go back to the scenario of which we have a developer and a designer, and we start using those tools in order to improve the collaboration, we have the following flow. Chromatic is there as a hosting tool, which provides storybook versions as a UI catalog, which is used by the designer to get some inspirations to know exactly what's already available in the app. So not to reinvent the wheel. The designer will have lots of discussions with the developer because Storybook has the add-ons and shows all, all kinds of possibilities from the components. Then the designer will become, yeah, will come with the designs and the assets, which could be using in any of those tools. The design tools will be integrated in the development uh, in, into Storybook, which is used as a development tool by the developer. So the developer does his thing or her thing, and then creates the component or changes the component, then publishes that change, which now so Chromatic use is used as a testing tool, which notifies both the designer and developer about those changes. So then we basically start the UI review process. The designer is not really happy with the changes. The developer takes that into consideration, starts working on the changes, then publishes a new version to Chromatic, which notifies again, both the designer and developer. The designer reviews then the change and then everybody's happy. Now that the changes have been reviewed, uh, it's time to approve the merge request, which will then uh, update the UI catalog of, um, of Chromatic because now the new version is there and the designers will have access to those as the new baseline. And then you can ship to production 
with more confidence. So this is the experience that I implanted basically at Ineco, and it's something that has helped us greatly. Um, and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So thanks a lot for your time. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, feel free to reach me out.